What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Motor Trend. Man, I've been so busy. I apologize for not pushing out any content for you all, but work has been crazy busy, and let's be honest, the projects haven't really been getting done. I've done a couple uh, honeydew projects in the house, but that's really been it. So uh, I'm going to let you all know kind of what I've been doing. I've done some work on the 68 uh, front suspension, but the Z01 is going under the knife officially for the first time so I'm kind of excited for that I got quite a few parts uh, they're kind of sitting over here on the bench which you can't see um, I'm kind of running the film now off my my new FX3 and the 24 millimeter uh, G lens that I got so this thing is awesome um, if you haven't looked at my last video I know it's nothing crazy but I did a little snippet of the FX3, so I really enjoy this camera. I'm excited to do more cinematic video or films with it. So, just to give you a brief um, little explanation of what I'm doing for the ZL1, uh, let's see. I'm putting a cam in, uh, setting the supercharger off the Kong performance to get ported along with the snout, uh, upper lower pulleys. Um, I already have in there now. I installed some American Racing headers a couple weeks ago, and man, that really opened her up. Um, I got a heat exchanger going in. I have a DSX um, auxiliary fuel pump going in. A cam, if I didn't already say that. Cam, I got a cam going in. Oh yeah, I got a cam going in. But uh, uh, let's see, what else? Um, upper lower pulleys. Um, when I got ATI Super Damper, lower pulley. Um, I got the uh, NKG TR7 plugs, the Granatelli plug wires. I have some injector 1050 IDs going in. Um, Nick Williams 103 throttle body, so quite a few things. Um, and I'm hoping with the tune of my buddy Ivan at Southwest Speed here in Albuquerque, he can freaking make this Camaro go, I don't know, close to 700 wheel horsepower. So we're gonna see. I got some wheel and tire combo coming for the rear end too, but just to give you guys a little uh, snippet of the 68 here, I haven't done a whole lot. I've worked on the front suspension a little bit. I still gotta finish painting the subframe, as you can see up there. But um, the upper and lower A-arms are kind of in, they're just dangling. Um, you know, I'm not too sure why, uh, and these are Chris Alston uh, Chassis Works products, but I'm not too sure why I end up getting the top that's like gray and the bottom A-arm that's black. It kind of is like a cool look if you think about it. Uh, in the end game, it might be kind of unique, but I thought components, you know, suspension components like that would be kind of all the same. So they're kind of in, just hanging in there. Um, still got to grease up all the the fittings you know the the bushings and stuff but i have to um torque them down so they're kind of just hanging in place and i've been doing some work over here i have to actually get a new um the spring compressor that i do have isn't working with these so these very shocks are i think they're i think these are double adjustable and uh, these things are gonna be pretty sweet. So that's going in. And I've also, the reason why I haven't been doing much work with this is because one, I've been working, and two, if you guys don't know, um, you guys probably seen the video of me trailering back my motorcycle. Well, I haven't really dove into this much for you all, but this is a 1982 CB750, kind of the early day street bike. And what I've been doing is working on these carburetors. I took these out and took that old air box out that kind of fills this entire gap right here and um, took it out and I've been rebuilding the carbs and they don't look like nothing special on the outside. They look pretty stock still, um, but I did get a new kit for them for the internals for all the um, jets and everything in the some of the uh, gaskets that go in the float bowls or the whatever these bowls are down here but 
Uh, some new parts here, like a lot of this plastic was kind of rotting away. Uh, I still use some of those brackets as you can see, but um, these clamps are kind of just holding it in place because I do have a bracket that's coming in and it's gonna sit more or less right here, maybe straight across, and then it's gonna kind of mount on this bracket here. Um, and it's gonna support this uh, side of the four carbs because without that air box, it really doesn't have much support. And the, um, I'll show you guys the, let's see, the air box or, yeah, kind of the, of the air box but not really but it's it's more or less a uh these came from for a company called four into one and they're pretty sweet i like them a lot because they're all black so these air cleaners right here pretty sweet uh make sure you get the appropriate uh width here for your carbs but i'll show you all kind of how this is going to sit i can't really do it with the clamps on but if i basically mount this up here that sits over like that, if you can, if my camera can focus. So there's gonna be four of them right there. One, two, three, four. And that's gonna put a little extra weight on this side of the carb, so that mounting plate is gonna hold this side of the carb up, uh, cause nothing else is really holding that up. So it'll be pretty cool, I'm excited to get these in. But uh, I got a couple other parts for the bike in. Uh, some rear shocks. I'm not sticking with that same um, style kind of vintage look. I got a little something different but they're all black and uh, this bike was my uncle's bike. He kind of handed it down uh, you know unintentionally obviously because he passed away um, so I took it over for my family. Uh, he passed away about 21 years ago so um, rest in peace um, Uncle Danny but uh, I'm gonna take care of this thing and I have been wanting to for years. Man, those carbs were such a pain in the butt to, to, um, to rebuild and get into. But I think all in all, it was worth it. Um, 15 years ago, my dad and I tried to get this thing running and I remember him and I spraying a bunch of fluid starter into that, that number four carb and that was the worst carb that I had to clean. So. Don't ever do that if you plan on working on the bike 15 years later. So um, do it and then maybe right away start working on the carbs or something. That would probably be more beneficial. But I'm still working on a couple parts here. Uh, throttle cables are kind of set. Let's see if I can get a zoom in here. So throttle cables are set, it still retracts, but I need to get a couple screws. I'm not sure if I'll use this original housing for the, uh, the kill switch, but I do have a, another um, brake fluid reservoir that's going in but everything is mostly stock on this bike stock gauges uh, let's see it's got 51,000 miles so pretty good for uh, 82 had to get a, a brand new um, ignition put that in and wired it up because I didn't have the keys anymore so um, I have brand new tires for this thing oh you guys probably saw that's my old stand-up jet ski that is also a project that's gonna happen sometime soon. Someday, sometime soon when I start, when I when I stop working on both my Camaros and the bike. So, um, like I said, the, the ZL1 here is gonna get the knife. Um, I do have some brake pads. I think they're Power Stop. I'm not sure what exact brand, but they're probably gonna get put in. I know the ZL1 brakes are really really good but I've been having some squeaking issues uh, not sure if it's just because they're been dirty honestly I've been having them when I clean the car right away when they're dirty it's it just kinda comes all the time so it's really really annoying um, and it's really light pressure braking that I hear this from maybe some of you all that are watching that have these can can kinda cue into maybe what this is but my buddy thinks it could have just been because they're dirty. He said on the on his Z, it kind of does the same thing. And I said, well, when I wash the car immediately, I still get the same problem. And we're kind of sitting there with our thumb up our butt, like, what the heck is wrong? So, um, oh, one other thing, uh, without talking about the Z that I've I've done recently, uh, check it out. Boom. 
New trunk pan. Yeah. I still gotta get this side. This side I think doesn't have a stopper, but yeah, this is getting kind of dirty. Uh, they're just dusty rather, but boom, new trunk pan. Don't have to do any body work. Uh, and then also with the door here, I started to mess around with some body work, but it gets worse as I get lower. So I just went ahead and ordered a new door. So I'm not even gonna worry about that. So new door coming, new probably left quarter going in at some point, but uh, the focus right now is because the ZL1 is my daily. I need to get this girl um, prepared, get her, I mean, she's already jacked up. Um, thanks to my, uh, where they at? The Z is jacked up. Thanks to, God, where'd I put those things? Um, that Magpuck, yeah. The Magpuck and the, this guy. I'm sure you guys remember the video of that, so. Magpuck, ZL1, add-ons, uh, lift. Anyway, um, I don't really have anything else for you guys for this video, but uh, I'm gonna start breaking down the car, and when I do, I'll start filming some video on the side for you all. Maybe some, some B footage or something so you guys can see. But if you have any questions um, about you know how to dive into this motor, this LS3, and um, install a cam let me know there's tutorials out there I've used them in the past they're really great uh, material and really great stuff to follow along with and uh, and start building your car in your garage like I do when you got no space because your garage or your Camaro is freaking take up too much room with all these parts of it I got parts hanging around all over the place in this garage so anyway um, more suspension coming in for the 68. I have, like I said, the chassis works by Chris Austin. I have the rear four link bolt-on coming in. Um, the ZL1's got some wear, uh, excuse me, a wheel tire uh, combo coming in for the rears uh, with some weld wheels. And I think I got the Mickey ET uh, SS wheels. Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much it. I've, I bought a welder and I'm gonna start doing some welds here for the 68 Camaro, but I haven't really ventured into that yet, so um, maybe I'll start doing some welds here soon, and then you guys get to see that. But uh, I'm gonna do a little review on that little flex weld 125 that I got from uh, was it uh, from titanium, a titanium 125 flux welder. So I'll be doing a little review on that, just kind of explaining how it is from a beginner standpoint. That's all I really am. So. Um, Hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, stay tuned for the Camaro builds and possibly the bike build if that's what you want to see on this channel. All right, it is day number two. I am back. Um, I took off the front bumper last night um, after I did my video footage and uh, got the supercharger off and got it packed up and it is shipped out. She gone. So um, just to give you guys a little on the car here. Front bumper, if you guys have never taken it off, it's not too difficult. Um, like I said, there's fasteners kind of uh, right up in here. Um, maybe four, eight of them or so. A couple 10 millimeter bolts and uh, maybe two on the sides here. And then when you get it off, it basically has those 10, 10 millimeters that were sitting. Let's see if I get to focus right here. Come on, camera, focus. Um, these 10 millimeters right there all right touch screen forgot i had that on here so those little kind of guiders are in there on each side there's three of them and then the 10 millimeters go kind of right next to them so there's one there uh there's one there and there so those three and actually there's a fourth one there's a fourth guide right down here so those four guides right there kind of um, guide the side on for you. Very helpful. And like I said, there's uh, other bolts underneath. Um, but those are really easy to get to. Those are just either um, a 10 millimeter or a, uh, I want to say they're a star bit. So, uh, got everything off like I said. And I... This is what it basically looks like right now. Um, 
with the supercharger off. And to be honest, with it off, it's just your plain old LS3, in my opinion. So, kind of cleaned up some crud here. I think this is a little bit of dried fluid, maybe from the heat exchanger inside the lid. But I covered the ports there to the heads. I'm going to be removing the valve covers and doing some work on the drivetrain, as well as removing the. Um, I already drained the fluids, but I got to remove the radiator, the fan assembly to get to the pulleys. And then the heat exchanger is going to replace this one. This is the stock heat exchanger, and it's. I'll do a comparison when I get it out, but it's really only like an inch thick or less. And. The one that's going to replace it right there is probably like three or four inches wide, so it's it's really in comparison a lot a lot bigger. Here's the uh, fuel rails uh, with the stock injectors. This is the um, the brick right for the cooling. That's going to get reinforced. We got some aluminum brackets to go in the back and the front to get reinforced. There was quite a bit of oil up in there, and uh, for those of all that don't or I should say for all those that have a uh, LSA, or maybe you don't think you need a catch can, um, you really do. My car had 40,000 miles on it, and I don't even run it that hard, and there was still some oil built up in the little galleys on the top of the, uh, the front of the supercharger. So catch cans definitely help preventative maintenance-wise, and uh, you know, help keeping everything from getting down in your block. So that's it for the build right now. Supercharger got sent off to Kong Performance, so they'll get it in about a week, and then I'll get it back. I don't know. I think the turnaround is five to seven days, and I'll get it back within, a, would say, a couple weeks and put it back on. In the meantime, I'm going to be throwing all this other stuff in. So, All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for this week of Motor Trend. Thanks for watching, and I appreciate your subscription, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.